The film begins by depicting the life of Ryuzo, a former Yakuza member. Ryuzo spent his golden years with his son Ryuhiai, his wife, and their grandson. Ryuzo's life is described as being similar to that of other elderly people. Despite being a former Yakuza, he frequently practices with a toy bamboo sword and displays his Yakuza tattoos. Ryuhiai is genuinely attached to his father. He frequently gives money to Ryuzo despite receiving numerous complaints from neighbors who were disturbed by Ryuzo's shouting during morning practice. The scene shifts when Ryuzo, who is alone at home, receives a phone call from a man. The man stated that Ryuhiai had lost 5 million yen from the company and needed to replace it immediately or risk being fired. Ryuzo appears perplexed because he does not have much money. Finally, he requested a meeting with the man in order to hand over the money. Ryuzo gathered his belongings at home and dashed out the door to meet the man. The man and Ryuzo agreed to meet at the park. When he arrived, the man was dressed nicely in a suit and glasses. He claims to be the company's messenger, sent to retrieve Ryuhiai's money. Ryuzo then requested that the man sit on a park bench, but he did not bring the 5 million yen that he had requested previously. Ryuzo, on the other hand, took his valuables, which he removed one by one from a black plastic bag. There's everything from a leather belt to an ancient coin collection. The man appeared surprised to see Ryuzo's actions, and at that moment, another elderly man approached and greeted Ryuzo. Masa, Ryuzo's younger brother when he was a Yakuza, appears to be the other man. Ryuzo informs Masa that the man is a messenger from his son's company, and that he will take the money. Masa realizes the man is a swindler and plans to beat him up. Ryuzo simply misunderstood and felt guilty because his brother had casually accused Ryuhiai's male co-worker and intended to apologize by cutting his own finger. The man was terrified by their actions and fled immediately. Ryuzo and Masa finally left the park to go for a walk together. On the way, they come across another friend and former Yakuza member named Mokichi, who is being beaten by a group of young boys. Ryuzo attempts to save Mokichi by frightening the gang of young boys who have Yakuza tattoos on their bodies. Instead of being terrified, the young boys laughed and mocked Ryuzo. Fortunately, Murakami, a veteran police officer who happened to hit Ryuzo, witnessed the incident and intervened. Following the incident, Ryuzo, Masa, Mokichi, and Murakami went out to eat at a restaurant. Murakami used to be a cop who used to apprehend Ryuzo and other Yakuza gangs when they were younger. The veteran cop then explained that the generation has changed and that young people are no longer afraid of the Yakuza. He also revealed that the delinquent gang was a part of a new gang known as Kian Rango. Murakami then told Ryuzo not to get into any trouble with the gang, but Ryuzo ignored Murakami's warning. Instead, he intends to assemble former Yakuza members to form a new organization. Ryuzo, Masa, and Mokichi returned to Ryuhiai's house to continue drinking. When Ryuhiai returned home that night, he was surprised to see his father's old friends reunited. Ryuhiai chastised Ryuzo for thinking they'd be back in trouble when they were younger when he saw the three of them gathered in the living room. Ryuzo is embarrassed and decides to leave Ryuhiai's house after being treated in this manner by his son in front of his friends. He and Mokichi decided to spend some time in Masa's apartment. The following day, the former member of the Yakuza group whom Ryuzo had previously invited arrived. Takanori is a former Yakuza member who used to kill opponents with a razor. Hideo, who was once known for his ability to throw nails that always hit the target, arrived not long after. Hideo walked with a limp because he was elderly and suffered from heart disease. After a while, another elderly man approached with a stick. Suddenly, the old man drew a sword from his stick and began to demonstrate his abilities. Ichai's, a Yakuza swordsman, was apparently the old man. The last man to join them is Mac, an ex-Yakuza who dresses like an 80s rocker and always carries a gun. Ryuzo invited everyone to a building he knew belonged to the Kihan Rango gang after everyone had gathered. When they arrived, the building was guarded by three gang members who immediately chased the old men away. However, Ryuzo did not remain silent and displayed the Yakuza tattoos on his body, despite the fact that members of Kihan Rango insulted them once more. Then Mac took a step forward and fired a gun at the three gang members, causing them to flee in a car. They returned in the evening to eat together to celebrate the successful expulsion of Kihan Rango members from the property. Ryuzo suggested that the six grandfathers reform the Yakuza group and gradually establish a reputation for being feared. They then accepted Ryuzo's proposal and held a group formation ceremony, naming Ryuzo as chairman. They all moved into Masa's apartment the next day, when a salesman unexpectedly arrived at the apartment to offer sales items. The salesman was initially gracious and offered Masa a free water filter, despite the fact that he eventually forced Masa to buy the floor mattress he sold. When the salesman saw the Yakuza at Masa's house, he finally gave the floor mattress away free of charge out of fear. Nishi, the salesman's boss, was furious when he returned to the office and learned what had happened. Nishi is revealed to be the gang leader Kian Rango, who is also the boss of the collar scammer who previously claimed to be from the Ryuhiai company. The Ryuzo Yakuza group is patrolling the area when they notice a man getting out of a luxury car. 
When collecting debts, Ryuzo and his group notice a man disguised as an old geezer sitting in a wheelchair to be pitted. Ryuzo then confronted Tokunaga, the man who had dared to charge into their territory. Tokunaga, terrified, begs to be released in exchange for teaching the Ryuzo Yakuza group how to collect debts. They then reached an agreement. Tokunaga then drove Ryuzo and his friends to an apartment complex. To attract sympathy before going in to collect the debt, Tokunaga disguises Masa as a homeless man. Ryuzo, Mokichi, and Masa also went to the apartment of a woman who owed them money. Instead of feeling sorry for Masa, the woman begged for mercy because her husband was dying of cancer. As a result, she has no money to pay. Their strategies were reversed, and Ryuzo felt sorry for the woman and granted her a one-month grace period. Not only that, but Ryuzo gave her money. Following that, Ryuzo intends to beat Tokunaga because he has the heart to force him to collect a debt owed to a troubled woman. Ryuzo asks who his boss is after knocking Tokunaga to the ground. Tokunaga then revealed that he was a member of the Kihin Rango gang, prompting Ryuzo and his friends to rush to the gang's headquarters. Nishi had already prepared for Ryuzo and the Yakuza group's arrival at the Kihin Rango gang's office by calling the police to chase them away. When the police arrived, Ryuzo and his friends had just confronted Nishi inside Kihin Rango's office. Murakami was among the cops who arrived, and he finally freed Ryuzo with only a warning to stop causing trouble. However, Ryuzo disregarded Murakami's warning and continued patrolling the area. They were walking when they noticed a crowd of people on patrol. Among them is Yasu, Ryuzo's friend and former Yakuza member. Yasu explained the protest that day, which prompted Ryuzo to agree to assist him. Ryuzo returned to Ryuhiai's house in secret to steal his son's car. He then put a sticker on the car and a loudspeaker that played the protesters' demands. The manager of the office building where the protest took place initially ignored the protesters. When he saw a car approaching with a loudspeaker, he became terrified that the protest would spread. Finally, the manager delegated the expulsion of the demonstrators to one of his subordinates, Ryuhiai. Ryuhiai did, in fact, work for the company. To cut a long story short, Ryuhiai had no choice but to confront the protesters in front of the company building. Ryuzo was surprised to see his son apparently working at the company at that point. Ryuzo was even more surprised because Tokunaga and several members of Kihin Rango arrived at the same time. The company manager did not simply tell Ryuhiai to kick the protesters out. They also hire gangsters to disperse protests. Ryuzo saw this and rushed up to the company building to chase Tokunaga away because he didn't want his son to associate with gangsters. Ryuzo beats up Tokunaga and tells him to leave when they meet in the manager's office. Unfortunately for Tokunaga, he takes another blow when he returns to Kihin Rango's office and informs Nishi about Ryuzo getting in the way once more. The Ryuzo Yakuza, on the other hand, was about to celebrate the protest's success by having a good time. They appear to revert to their youth and glory days. Meanwhile, Nishi has grown tired of the Ryuzo Yakuza gang and begins plotting vengeance. He then summoned one of the gang's members, Kihin Rango, who was dating Yuriko, Mokichi's granddaughter. Nishi requests that he kidnap Yuriko in order to teach the Yakuza a lesson, but the man couldn't bear the thought of kidnapping his girlfriend, so he came to Mokichi to reveal Nishi's plans. Mokichi is enraged and plans to murder Nishi. The next day, Mokichi arrived at Kihin Rango's office disguised as a food delivery man. He hides in the toilet with the intention of stabbing Nishi with a knife as soon as he enters. Mokichi's plan did not work out because he was mistakenly hiding in the women's restroom. As a result, he was apprehended by Nishi's men, who beat him to death. The Yakuza group is devastated by Mokichi's death, and they vow vengeance. The plan of vengeance was carried out in two ways. Takanori and Yasu are about to steal a plane and crash it into the Kihin Rango building. Meanwhile, Ryuzo and his friends attack Kihin Rango's office with Mokichi's body in an attempt to scare the opponent. The plan went well at first. Yasu and Takanori successfully kidnap a technician in order to steal the plane. However, as they were about to fly to Kihin Rango's office building, the plane flew over the US aircraft carrier, forcing them to land. Ryuzo, on the other hand, rushed inside Kihin Rango's office. Unfortunately, their attacks went awry, with the old man's attacks specifically targeting Mokichi's corpse. Nonetheless, their atrocities were enough to frighten Kihin Rango's gang, allowing Nishi to flee. The Ryuzo Yakuza group did not let Nishi escape, and they tried to catch up with him by hijacking a bus while still carrying Mokichi's blood-splattered body. A chase ensues, and Nishi continues to flee until he reaches a fork in the road. He was forced to exit his car after the bus collided with it, and he intended to apologize, but Ryuzo and his friends continued to beat him up. Just then, the police, led by Murakami, arrived and broke up the fight. Murakami also arrested Nishi on suspicion of murdering Mokichi, despite the fact that he also led Ryuzo and his group to hijack the bus and cause chaos on the road. The film Ryuzo and the Seven Henchmen concludes with Ryuzo being arrested, but he is actually relieved because the vengeance action is over. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.